Welcome back to another episode of Where Faith Meets Entrepreneurship and Business. This week, we are talking about emotions. So when I ask who is the leader, a lot of times we think of the leader of our nation or we think of the leader of our home. But when I'm asking who is the leader, I want to ask like who is the leader of your life? And the reason I ask that is because most of us, if we look at what's leading us, it's our emotions. And we've put our emotions in the driver's seat. And now every action or every move that we do is based on emotion. And as a business owner, as someone who is in their career and you're looking to thrive and grow, we know that our actions, even outside of the boardroom or outside of the classroom or outside of our office we have to be spirit led not emotionally led and so i want to start with this quote um, because i think it's so so powerful especially in today's time it says your emotions are the slaves to your thoughts and you are slave to your emotions so in order it would be your thoughts then your emotions, then you. And so if you can change your thoughts, then you can change your emotions, then in turn, you would be changed. And I kind of love that picture. And that quote is by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I love that because it shows us that a lot of times we have more control and more opportunities for leadership in our life than we like to think. Because I had a thought today And I was like, man, a lot of the people who are in prison today, it's because they made an emotional decision. I was angry, so I killed. I was hungry, so I stole. Um, I didn't have what I want, so I decided to go take it in any way or form. And they're in prison based off something emotional. Not for everybody, but for some people. And if we could decide that our emotions are not facts, they are real feelings, but they aren't facts, I think we could get further in business and relationships in every area every area of our life. And so this came to me because I started to think as an entrepreneur, there are times where I don't want to do a certain thing. Maybe I'm tired that day, maybe I'm just not in the mood, but what has helped me continue to be an entrepreneur and see some success in it is my emotions aren't the deciding factor whether I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Now, at times, they are. There have been times where I don't want to record a podcast episode or I don't want to finish a certain thing um, or I wait to the last minute of the deadline because I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like it. And I just wonder how much further we would be if the answer isn't based off or like our decision to do something something isn't based on whether or not our emotions line up with it. How much further would we be? How much stronger would we be um, as Christian entrepreneurs and business owners and Christian women and men in their career? How much better would we be if we didn't let our emotions decide everything? It's so funny because a lot of times I will decide what I'm going to eat for dinner what I'm going to eat for lunch, breakfast, based on my emotions. So I will have an elaborate dinner plan that's healthy. But if my day goes sideways or I am too stressed out or any type of emotion that isn't the mindset or emotion that I had when I planned the dinner, I will allow that to now take me to Chipotle or take me to Chick-fil-A or somewhere else because I... I just don't feel like it, right? And I just wonder how much money would I save if what I ate wasn't determined by how I felt. Like, how much money would I be saving right now? Um, Also, how many words would I now be able to take back and retract if I wouldn't have said I'm out of anger? How many things could I have gotten done if I would have did them despite how I was feeling? And a lot of times, I don't even think we calculate how important this is because it's like, oh, I'm human. I deserve a day off. But then that one day off becomes like seven to nine days off. And what you said you were going to do last week, you put off to now four weeks later. And the only way to do that 
is to now change what we're feeding ourselves through what we watch, what we hear, what we eat, what we listen to, who we listen to. That's going to help us change our thoughts. So therefore, we now can change some of our emotions or we at least know what to do when those negative or more, um, I guess, negative emotions come up. Because if I'm having a day where I planned out this healthy meal and now it's getting towards the end of the day, I'm a little stressed and I'm like, you know what? A double cheeseburger sounds so good right now. I have bacon and I'm thinking of it. It's easy to just do it because who's stopping me? I'm a grown up. I have a car. I have the fun. So who would stop me? But if I can put in place now that eating healthy will not only make me live longer, hopefully, but it'll help my mind and it'll help my brain. I'm feeding my body the right thing. So then I can wake up the next day. I can pull perform at a better level if I could retrain my mind to have those thoughts it would help me in that moment as I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to stick to what I said and food may be the minimum it's just kind of what for me it's something that I have struggled with in the past where if I'm stressed out or I feel a way it's like okay let me go get something sweet I need a cupcake I need a cookie I need something versus um, there are times now where I stop myself and I was like, okay, why do you want that? You want that because you're looking or searching for something to make you feel good in this moment. But there are other things that you can reach for, which is why now like I won't have sweets in the house, but I'll have like fresh fruit and I'll chop up like a peach or something like that where it's a healthier option, but it still kind of helps me calm down and it may make me feel better. But also there are scriptures that we can go to. Because we know that it says that give our burdens to the Lord for he cares for us. He cares about our burdens. So if I'm stressed out after a work day, it would be in my best, my bet, it would be my best bet to now go sit down and talk with the Lord and discuss what I'm burdened about with him than it would be for me to go get a glass of wine and a big bowl of pasta. Because then the next day, what I run into is, okay, you're stressed again. Now are you going to do a double cheeseburger and a cocktail and extra fries or something? Like, are you going to keep having to seek something else out to help with those emotions when you actually could go to the source that could help you? And one of the things that I've seen has been able to help me with that is fasting. Fasting and praying makes my spirit stronger so that my flesh, my emotions is no longer running the show. It's not leading me. And it seems small when you compare it to something like, oh, whether or not you're going to get a cupcake, but it's huge when you're comparing it to something like you see a low balance in your business's funds for the week. And then you see this opportunity come where you can make money, but you shouldn't be partnering, partnering with who you're partnering with. But because you're so hungry for the money and your emotions are telling you that you're stressed out, you're fearful because you don't know if you're going to have enough finances. You don't really feel like at this moment you trust in God. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sign this. I'm going to sign this contract. I'm going to connect with this person. I'm going to do this. But it wasn't a God connection. And so now, because you're so used to doing things off of your emotions, you signed a contract with somebody, someone you should have never got into business with. And if you would have just taken those concerns to the Lord and sat with him, who knows how he could have provided or what he could have did. And so it, start, it starts with small things, but the more you feed your emotions and let it know that they're going to get X, Y, and Z. So if I'm sad, I know I'm, my body knows it's going to get a cupcake. Or if I'm angry, my body knows that it's going to get this. You're training your body to continually desire and crave those things that aren't actually good for you. And now it's like been five to 10 years of this that it's hard to cut the habit. And one of the ways to cut the habit is fasting and praying. It's going to make your spirit stronger. It's going to help you push back not only just food, but it helps you see clearly even in making business decisions. Not every client should you take on. But you may not know that because your emotions are telling you we need the money. I want that new car. I want the new home. I want these things. I need the money, so I'm going to take on this client. Now the client is a headache. 
it's a horrible situation, but it's because at the time your emotions felt like you weren't provided for or you were in fear and you made an emotional decision. And so if we can change our thoughts, because that's where it's going to start, whatever you think on and you hold, you think on it too long, it's usually what it's going to become. So if you are in fear for so long, you're going to make decisions based on fear versus if you have built your faith up, faith up, you've been fasting and praying, you've been talking to God, you've been seeking him, you're more likely to make a decision that is going to be spirit based versus flesh based. And so one of my scriptures that I put up today um, is a scripture, Proverbs 4 and 23. At this time, this was Solomon pouring out the wisdom that God was giving him. And it says, let me read the right version. Um, I like the NIV version uh, when I'm sharing with others because I just feel like it's easier, but I also do another version. So NIV says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. The ASV says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Our heart is affected by what we watch, what we listen to, the people that we're around, the things we allow to get in our thoughts. And that's why God is so adamant about that we need to guard it. We need to guard it because everything that we do is going to come from there. It's just like, um, I love this analogy in my brain for some reason of, you will hear a song and all day you will keep singing it. And you're like, man, how did this get stuck in my head? Like, I can't get this song out of my head. And people think that like, oh, I could just watch this movie and it's not going to do anything to me. Or I can just sit and listen to this type of conversation and won't do anything to me. But the same way that a song gets stuck in, stuck in your head and in your thoughts and you keep replaying it over and over or singing it out is the same way that movies and conversations and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but the podcast to try to tell you the get rich quick schemes and all of that, that gets into your heart too. That gets deep into your thoughts too. And that's why we'll find ourselves double-minded. I found myself sometimes where I'm like, one day I'm thinking one way, the next day I'm thinking the other. And then I finally am like, wait, what does the word say about this? Because I know that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you are feeling recently like you're just unstable, you can't choose either way, you may need to go back, spend some time with God, fast and pray so you can get back on track because you may be listening to too many voices. And too many voices will cause you to be unsure because the main voice that should be leading our life is, is God. Every decision we make, there are decisions, yes, that God will give you wisdom to make and you don't have to always seek him. But there are decisions that you really need to seek God in. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. If you don't know about a partnership, don't let fear and emotions of not having enough and being in lack cause you to enter into a partnership that you shouldn't when you could have called on God. But we have to change our thoughts to the first person I need to go to is God about this. Not my emotions. My emotions are not the determining factor on what is being done in my business. My emotions are not leading anything. But we can only get there with a disciplined mind. And without that disciplined mind, we're going to continuously make emotional decisions. And I hate to say it, but a lot of emotional decisions don't usually like end in the right thing. We're adults. We know that emotional decisions in relationships can lead to children. And not everyone that you find yourself in a relationship with should you have children with. We know that sometimes emotional decisions lead us to do things in anger. We say things that we shouldn't say. Financially, there are so many people that make financial decisions based off emotions. Oh, I'm going to run this credit card up. I'll pay it off. I need retail therapy. Shopping is not a form of therapy. Let's just start there. 
but it's an emotional response to a feeling that you had. It is a response that I need a need met and I don't want to go to God, so I'm going to an outside resource. So ultimately, again, your emotions are your emotions are leading you. And a huge um, thing that I, I see a lot of influencers saying that what made them successful is that they're consistent, which means that they decided that even when they didn't feel like recording, they still recorded. And they will get online and tell you, I didn't feel like recording today, but here I am. And amazingly, those are the people that we see making millions of dollars now, not because their content, unfortunately, is any good. Some of them, you know, it isn't, but it's because they're consistent. So you can be consistent in something that you may not even be that good at, but because of your consistency and not allowing your emotion to lead, you now see the byproduct is success. So my goal with this message is just to provide the awareness that your emotions have been leading you, but they don't have to continue. Your emotions do not have to continue leading you. You can choose now that I'm going to take the next three days, fast and pray, get my spirit stronger. And fasting, I just want to say like fasting doesn't have to be 24 hours or three days fully without food and water. Ask God what your fast should be. I know for me, I've done like a six to six, a seven to seven, or I'll do 24 hours and then not, and then 24 more hours. Just kind of depends on what God is leading me to do. But I've learned that the more I fast and pray, the more I'm consistent. And I want that for all of us. Because I understand that consistency is going to lead to us being successful in business, relationships, and honestly, all areas of our life. But you have to tell your emotions that they have to take the backseat. They are not the leader anymore. So I hope this helps someone this week um, because we're, we're getting to, you know, the fourth quarter of the year. And we're getting to a place where what may have been working in one season is not going to work in this upcoming season. And one of those things is your emotions, um, your emotions being the leader. Emotions can no longer lead you. They aren't facts. And you don't want to make the wrong decision because you were emotional at a time. And now it's costing you more than you were willing, more than you're willing to pay. Because sometimes, you know, God is, don't get me wrong, God has his grace, his mercy. It goes beyond anything we can imagine. But there are still some consequences when we make emotional decisions. So it's best for us to try to get ahead of that and make more spiritually led decisions. So that way, as we're moving forward, we don't have to get hit so hard with certain consequences. Because the wrong partnership, sometimes it's harder to end. The wrong client, sometimes you now, the money that they gave you, you already spent it. So either you got to figure out a way to give them a refund or you have to continue to work with this client. And it's causing you stress and worry and a lot of other things. So just make sure that you take the next step, which is fasting and praying and actually asking God to show you in what areas of your life are your emotions leading. Who is the leader? So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I do want to say that we have a newsletter now that you can sign up. The link will be in the description box and it's a monthly newsletter. I mean a weekly newsletter where every week I will be putting out just the inspiration. I know I do it through podcasts, but I've been wanting to do it through writing as well and also share some business resources. So I promise it's not like a spammy email. It's literally just God giving me a word to encourage others during the week because sometimes when we are stressed out or going through something we don't want to pick up the phone and call anyone but if we could pick up our phone and just look at a newsletter that came out and it's a quick little excerpt that'll give me some encouragement and empower me to keep going when i'm having a rough week i want access to that so we are not selling your emails nothing crazy no spam it's literally just me wanting to share um what's on my heart that week the guy a word that god has given me for business owners for entrepreneurs 
for those who are in their career and being able to really pour into you and hopefully empower you and encourage you to keep going. Because every week for some people is a struggle. There are some people week by week, they're being hit with tests and hard things. And I don't want you to feel like you're going through that alone. So if you could look on your phone, look up, a, look at a quick newsletter, I think it would be great. And I feel like God gave me the idea. So I hope you sign up for it. It will be going out every week. So you still have time this week to go ahead and sign up and then it'll be sent to you. So I really appreciate if you sign up. Um, I think it's going to be an awesome extra way that I can connect with the listeners. So thank you again. Share this episode. Replay it throughout the week if you need it because when I am giving these messages is because God has already hit me with it first and then I'm able to come share it. And for the past few months, God has been working with me on this. There have been so many days where I may be tired at the end of the day and it is a cold bottle of wine or something like that. And I'm like, okay, God, wine isn't that bad. Like I can have a glass of wine and then he'll hit me with, why do you need it though? And if the immediate answer is not because I like the flavor of it with the meal that I'm cooking, I need it because I'm stressed out. Guess what? God is like, no. And I literally listen to him and I do not go touch it. And I tell my friends um, that drinking for me is for celebratory purposes. I don't want to drink when I'm sad. I don't want to drink um, just because I'm frustrated. That's not that's not what God wants for me. And so if I do, um, by chance, have a glass of wine or something, now it's usually we're celebrating someone, a glass of champagne at an event, or it is I like um, to pair my wines with a meal that I'm cooking. So if I'm cooking seafood or a new pasta or anything like that, I may pair it with it. Um, but everybody's thing isn't drinking. I know how some people feel about that. So that's not what I'm <laughs> trying to get at. I'm just saying that everything that I'm saying on here is something I've actually dealt with myself and something that God is dealing with me on or has dealt with me on. Um, so I'm only coming to relay the message because I've been there too. And you're not alone in it. You're not the only one who has been emotionally led. And I hope that it won't continue because God is big enough, good enough, amazing enough that he can help us with it. And we can start making spirit-led, amazing decisions that bring us the success that we're hoping for. So I hope you have a great week. Share this message with anybody you know who may need it. And I'll see you back here next week.